Doing fine, Doug. How are you? I'm very well. Has has the uh, GOP lost its mojo? No, no. Well, I don't know. I don't think they've lost their mojo. I think that they're uh, they're scared about losing uh, control and recognizing that there's so many distractions going on right now between the Russia investigation and let's just be honest, the president is a distraction on a daily basis anyway, whether from his just based on his personality and his tweeting, I listen. He, the president's still the president. The Congress is still the Congress, and they're pri they have a primary job to do, and that's to govern. And um, the clock is ticking on them, and they've got to get to work. So uh, I don't think they've lost their mojo at this point. I just think that they recognize that they are at a a place of urgency to start moving some important legislation, moving some important public policy um, to you know to correct a lot of the mistakes done in the previous administration and you know i think it's uh i think the fact that they're producing a bill that uh is going to get to the floor as quickly as possible listen this issue has been hashed out and hashed out for years um the fact that the democrats are crying wolf about oh we haven't read it or seen it they're going to have plenty of time to do that if that's their only message it just speaks to the lack of substance or 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 solutions that they have for this issue so no i think the republicans are, are recognized they've got to get to work and they're doing that and you touched on the uh, the time issue because, and I don't know the exact date, but Congress is going to take a summer break here eventually, and they're going to be gone for heaven only knows how long, and they've got that, the, the, the health care is sitting yep. on the desk. There's also the tax, the tax relief, the tax reform that they've been wanting to push, and that's another project that seems to be hanging fire right now. It is, and that's because, listen, I mean, tax reform can... There's two ways you can go. You can go bit by bit, or you can just do comprehensive. And I think doing comprehensive, particularly in these, this political climate, meaning so you, doing the complete overhaul, is just it's just unrealistic, and it's uh, and it's not it's not going to get you base hits, to use a baseball analogy. Um, maybe ultimately it gets you a home run, but but not for not for many 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 innings. And I and I think that. Um, there are many people in this country that would just like to see uh, the tax uh, the tax rates lowered um, and, and just start there uh, rather than look at all these little other uh, you know tax reform issues that might be more p um, politically difficult to get through um, certainly before the August recess you're going to see uh, Obamacare repeal uh, in front of Congress in fact I think the Senate will vote on this bill before July 4th recess um, which they should do, and again, the Republicans just need 50 votes to pass it, and uh, and then we'll be on our way. There's there's no way they're going to get to tax reform before the August recess, but there has been discussion uh, about some unprecedented uh, an unprecedented move to keep them here in town during the August recess and not call it a recess, be, have them work during the, uh, the month of August, um, and 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 set the table up for a very active fall. I don't think it's a bad move. I think um, at the end of the day, the, you know, the, as I said, the president's the president, Congress is the Congress. They got to work. They got to do their job. And um, historically, the party that's in power loses seats in the midterm election. It's the, one of the safest bets you can make. But what it is is just a matter of how many you would lose. And I think the the, the more they don't get things done, the more those midterms become very relevant. This is uh, Trey Harden with ABC News. He's a political analyst. He's joining us from Washington D.C. this morning. Um, you know, you, you touched on something as well. The constituency of these of these politicians, be they Republicans or Democrats, have suddenly discovered that they sort of like this health care pro program. And the, the, the Republicans for seven plus years now have been screaming about how terrible it is, but they're having a hard time coming up with a program that's going to that's going to make people happy. Yeah, I mean, it, it is true. While it's a very complex issue, and and it's and it's not as easy as just saying, okay, here's here's some, here's as much access to health care as you want, and and you know you're going to get it at, at bottom dollar prices and stuff like that. It, it, you would also think though that um, the presidents, or the presidents, sorry, the Republicans have had plenty of time to prepare for this moment. Um, you know, there are certainly problems with Obamacare. I mean, everyone acknowledges it, and the Democrats do as well, and that is why I would say to them, if their only message is, oh, well, we haven't seen the bill, and the Republicans are being too private about it, they need something stronger than that. But, um, you know, the 
the uh, there the people still want we 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 need to have access to health care. It needs to be affordable. There need to be options. Um, and if there's not a solution that brings that um, that keeps costs down and handles pre-existing conditions, then um, I I just think that you're going to see. Uh, you're going to see potentially a, a lot of people um, maybe flip or move uh, when it comes to the elections coming next November. Mm. All right, so we've got uh, health care, tax reform. Um, let's see, the Russian investigations are still going on. There's two separate reviews going on that. What else is out there that we should be looking at closely? Well, I think there's, of course, the, the ongoing issue um, – that I think is a positive for the president at this point um, on national security um, and uh, some of the and the war on terror and some of these uh, these looming and challenging crises. It's certainly North Korea and what happened with this student now dying. I think puts even more of an emphasis on it. Now, I'm not saying that um, the the uh, human tragedy of one person from from a rogue country like this is going to create World War III or nor that it should, but um, there needs to be some accountability for this. And um, I would say that before the United States acts, they need to uh, really try to get the entire world united against North Korea and use this as an opportunity to do that, and especially uh, focusing on China. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is just, uh, it's a human tragedy that's just beyond the pale of comprehension. And, um, but again, it just confirms everything we knew about this dictator and the people over there. Um, again, does that mean that military action is, is an option? Likely not. I think the options are limited because we're already doing most everything that can be done in terms of sanctions and travel bans and all of that. But I think North Korea is an example, um, just like what's going on in Syria and, and, uh, potentially other places in Afghanistan uh, that uh, are areas that the president and the Congress will continue to have to focus on um, and, and will be an ongoing public policy fight. Very good, Trey. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We greatly appreciate it. You got it. Take Trey, mm -hmm. we'll do. Trey Harden, ABC News political analyst, joining us from Washington, 628 here on the